Who's that girl? What's her name? Is she cool? Is she lame? Oh, you're talking about what's her name? Pepperan. Is she lame? Is she cool? Is she breaking every rule? Is she anybody's fool? Pepperan. 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 Marching in her own parade. Pepperan. She's like God in a million. Pepperan. Pepperan. Much too cool for seventh grade. Catch her if you can. Pepperan. Who? Is that that girl from gym class? No, that's me. Oh. Who is she, and why does she have her own song? Did someone take my lunch? Pepperan, Pepperan, marching in her own parade. Pepperan, she's like one in a million. Pepperan, Pepperan, much too cool for seventh grade. No one's cooler than Pepperan. She's her own biggest fan. Pepperan. Look, a French poodle. Le Poivre Anne est une spectacle plus amusant. Can you disarm it? Uh, please. Disarming double-fused adamantium bombs was my master's thesis. But I need more time. Time is the one thing we don't have. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Give me a break. You could have used these? Maybe I was just warming my mouth up for this. Please! Quiet, girl, you're ruining that picture! Sorry, mister. This picture was ruined long before I got here. Put simply, Revenginator is revolting, repellent, re-stinky. What do you think? Except for the fact that re-stinky is not a word, that was very good, Pepper Ann. It was cool and all, but don't you think you're being a little H-A-R sh? Milo, Miss Bladar made me the school paper's movie critic for a reason. It's my job to be harsh. Well, I for one think you were right about that romantic subplot. It was completely unmotivated. You do know what a subplot is, right? You wrote about it? I got the word out of this whole glossary of movie terms. I have three words for the director of Hard Asphalt. Get some talent. Macho mocho is mucho stinko. I'd rather beat myself on the head with a wooden plank than sit through this mind-numbingly bad film again. Oh. <laughs> oh. That Peppa Ann, she is so deliciously cruel. I'm Cameron Landisberg, the director of Macho Mucho. You said you'd rather beat yourself with a board than sit through my movie. Peppy, just tell the nice man that we're happy with our current religion. Plank, I said I would rather beat myself with a wood. You reviewers are all the same. You don't know the first thing about making movies, yet you dare to pass judgment on the rest of us who are out there trying. <laughs> don't judge me unless you've walked a mile in my moccasins, missy. He was right. I never have made a movie, and you know what? I bet I could make a better movie than any of those hacks. Of course you can, honey. You can do anything you set your mind to. I'm behind you 100%. Good, because I'm going to need a substantial amount of money to... Forget it. You want to make a movie, and you want me to pay for it? Yes, you'll be the executive producer, and I'll direct it. I've had Moose prepare a budget. Hmm, well, what's it about? Picture this. A guy, a girl, a coffee shop. Like the first buds of May, love blooms. Then, tragedy strikes. Ew, that sounds boring. Will it have action? Oh, yeah, lots of action. And dancing? I suppose it could have a little dancing. And a happy ending? No, no, it has to be a tragedy. Happy endings are the... No happy ending, no executive producer. Happy endings are the happiest endings. You're going to make your own movie? Yep. I'm going to direct it. Milo, you could film it. And Nikki, you could do everything else. Way cool. I'd be glad to help. We can get started this afternoon. I'll need a megaphone. What about the script? The what? The script. The thing that tells the story. It's like a book. You need a script. How else would you know what was going to happen? I thought I'd just wing it. You know, improvise. No, 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 that won't do. Take notes. 
The classic dramatic structure includes a beginning, a middle, a denouement, and an end. Aristotle said... I thought I'd never finish. All she wanted... <coughs> was a decent cup of coffee. Fade out. The end. Oh, Pepper Ann, this is brilliant! <sighs> I know. You must get the highest quality actors to do justice to these amazing characters. Of course I will. Craig and I are going to star in it. Sissy? She is perfect for the lead female role. Don't you think? Well, when I was writing the role of Natasha, a red-headed astrophysicist just trying to find a decent cup of coffee in this topsy-turvy world, I was thinking... Good. Sissy it is. Oh, and Craig's out, too. He didn't come to my last party. The male lead is going to wane the top. What? No way is that loudmouth freak gonna be the lead in my movie. No, mm, mm forget it. Whose movie? At least you liked my script. Now we can start filming. Here you go, Mr. Director of Photography. Wow, a whole new medium. The screen will be my canvas. The camera, my brush. Friends, tomorrow we begin shooting my masterpiece. Wistful Rainbow. Natasha and Rico will come to life before our very eyes, meeting, loving, and losing each other at a cozy yet charming French bistro. A bowling alley? Nikki, what happened to the French bistro? They had to cater a last minute gospel brunch. Movie making is all about illusion, Pepper Ann. We'll dress the set with charming bistro accoutrements, and voila! No one will ever know. Lane three, your nachos are ready. The difference. All right, sissy. In this scene, you're slipping away in the microfilm, and the bad guys are hot on your tail. Got it? And action! Well, aren't you a cool, cool drink on a hot, hot day? Like, do you want this stupid thing or not? Cut! 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 Sissy, your line is, Rico, you're the only one who can help me out of this pickle. I know, but I changed it because that's not like how real people talk. Yeah! Who wrote this junk anyway? Script doctors! Chill out. They just made some of the jokes funnier. The Pentagon? This is a whole different story. You're exaggerating. The only parts that were changed are the pink pages. The white pages are your original work. One page? That was a really good page. Arr! Milo, this scene stinks. This script stinks. This movie stinks. It's not as bad as you think. It's actually pretty good. You've managed to let everyone have their input. The final product will be a harmonious melding of all our creative forces. Okay, people. If you look at your revised script, you'll see that the scene by the cappuccino machine has been moved to the Pentagon vault. Well, I thought that shoot would kill me, but here we are with the raw footage that will soon be edited into my masterpiece. What up, sugar pup? Like, would you take this stupid thing? Hang on, let me just fix the tracking. No, PA, I did it on purpose. Shaky cam. It gives the scene a more realistic, gritty feeling, don't you think? Oh, shaky cam. Would you excuse me, please? <laughs> Dear readers, I was wrong. I am here to admit that loud and clear. For weeks, I've been judging movies in the most negative terms when I didn't even understand the entire filmmaking process. Many hands are involved in the creation of a film. The producer, director, writer, actors, director of photography. All these people have a huge influence on the final product. I ask for the forgiveness of anyone that I've unfairly judged. Now that I've walked a mile in your moccasins, I truly understand. Hmm. Hello? Congratulations on your article! Cameron Landisberg? So, how did it feel to actually do something instead of sitting around criticizing others? Terrible. My movie came out terrible. Don't sweat it. 
We don't do this for external rewards. We do this for ourselves. We do it for our art. I hear you, man. For our art. Hmm. Well, I'd better get going. I've got to count my money. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, nine. Aren't you coming down for the screening, Pepper Ann? No, it's awful. Come on, it might not be as bad as you think. You're just saying that to make me feel better. Yes. Step back, baby. Daddy's disarming. Witch wire. Witch wire! Strike! <gasps> One potato, two potato, three potato, four! <gasps> I did it! Sing my praises! Oh, oh, yes! You liked it? You really liked it? Did you hear that? It was so bad, it was great! You made a wonderfully campy movie. No, we made a wonderfully campy movie. And if they like this one, just wait till Cool Summer strikes back with a vengeance comes out. Picture it. Our bomb disarming heroes are back, but this time they're not taking any prisoners. Ninety degrees here, ninety degrees there, ninety degrees everywhere. Without ninety degree or right angles, as they are affectionately called, we would have no squares, no tissue boxes, no books. The letter T wouldn't even exist. Thank your lucky stars for right angles! You know, they used to be called wrong angles until I said, hey, what's wrong with them? Give the poor guys a break. <laughs> <laughs> if the Greek chorus is through, I'll continue. Be sure to bring your cameras on this Friday's class trip to Fuzzy World. The student who captures the most photographs of 90 degree angles will win a special prize. <laughs> yeah. We'll do that. The bowler coaster, the fuzzy tron, the Ferris wheel is nothing but a complex system of 90 degree angles. Uh, Gwen Mesru, Nurse Umla would like to speak with you. And then she packed up her books and left for the day. Whatever Nurse Umla told her it must have been awful. It ripped my heart in two to see her so... Boo yeah! Fish sticks just came out of the frying vat! Well, Nurse Umla was holding those lice screenings this week. I'm not saying anything, but how often does Gwen Mesro unbraid that hair and actually wash it? Gwen Mesro has lice. Lice, Marie. That's right, lice. Poor Gwen Mesro. Do they make I hope the parasites in your hair meet a timely death cards? Wait, you guys, I don't know for sure if she has... I'll make it myself. I'll need some watercolors, yeah, and a butter churn. So, Nikki, I got my Fuzzy World permission slip signed, but I left it at home. So if you could sneak away during gym... Pepper Ann, you just started a horrible rumor about Gwen Mesro. It was just talk. Besides, when was the last time someone took something I said seriously? I heard Ernie the janitor ran in with hedge clippers and cut off Gwen Mesro's braids right in the middle of Miss Dark's class. I told my mother that today's youth was unclean, but no, she didn't listen. Now I'm forced to go to school with the likes of that lice-ridden cootie Gwen Mesro. What do you think? There was once a lovely girl who only had one vice. We were horrified to learn that she'd caught a case of lice. One day I'll tell my children with a sigh and wistful stare. I could have loved Gwen Mesro if she'd only washed her hair. Milo, I made it up, okay? Gwen Mesro doesn't have lice. Gwen Mesro has lice? Oh, what have I done? Don't beat yourself up. Everyone knows there's no way Gwen Mesro could actually have lice. It would take an unprecedented warming trend for them to thrive this time of year. Really? I wouldn't worry. Gwen Mesro will be back tomorrow and everyone will have forgotten everything. Uh, 
I'm pulling for you, Gwen Mesro. You made me a car? That's so... Lice? Milo, I don't have lice. Good cover-up, but we all saw Nurse Umla send you home. So, when was the last time you undid your braids? All right, before we jump into geometry, it's time for you to pick your buddies for tomorrow's trip to Fuzzy World. Dieter, do you want to... <laughs> Milo, can we... Sorry, Gwen Mesro, but even I have limits. Uh, this is ridiculous. If the rest of you are scared of some silly rumor, then I'll be partners with... <clears throat> Good luck, Gwen. I get a little frightened on the parking lot tram. Perhaps you could hold my hand? But I don't have lice! My goldfish died! That's what Nurse Umla came to tell me. I spent the rest of the day at Fishy Mesro's burial! Why do you think I have these black ribbons in my braids? Um, because of the lice? <laughs> Look at her, alone, cast off by her peers, forced into lice film. Population one. I've lice listed Gwen Mesro. Ms. Mesro, if you just tell us what we need to know, we can all go home to our families. All right. I am a communist. For the tenth time, I don't care. Are you now or have you ever been infected with lice? No. Oh, I'll ask you again, Ms. Mesro. Are you now? Have you no sense of decency, Pepperan? Have you no sense of decency? from me, Pepper Ann, or haven't you heard? I'm poison. Gwen, I... You see, it was lunchtime, and well, we were all wondering, and I accidentally started a rumor that you had lice, but I didn't mean to. Can you ever forgive me? It was you? I'll make it up to you, Gwen Mesro, I swear. From this moment forward, my entire afternoon will be dedicated to convincing the world that you are lice-free. <sighs> then I guess I have no choice but to forgive you, Pepper Ann. You're the only friend I've got right now. If we make bodily contact, they'll never let me back in. Trust me. So you have to help me spread the word. Gwen Mesro never had lice. Baking soda, vinegar. How can substances so tame become so volatile when mixed? I was just making conversation, but I was wrong. She left because Fishy Mesro died. It's like in life. Two otherwise tranquil souls, such as Gwen Mesro and myself, come together to create passion unheard of. Too bad she has lice. Milo, have you been listening to a word I've said? No. You want your hat back? You repeat after me. Gwen Mesro is lice-free. Fine, whatever you say. Just give me back my hat! Don't forget to spread the word! And I didn't mean to start a rumor. Gwen Mesro is 100% lice free. I guess that makes sense. So, do you think you could publish a formal rumor retraction in Hazelnuts and Bolts? I don't know, Pepper Ann. The rumor retraction section is full. You can have my scripture you've always admired. It's the freshest. You obviously need this more than me. So, as you can read, the whole thing was a big, ugly mistake. Like, speaking of ugly? Vanessa took her hat back. But you guys believe me, right? You'll make sure everyone knows. Marie, you can put Gwen Mesro back on my invitation list. She's clean. I did it, Nikki. The Gwen Mesro lice rumor is out of circulation. I'll be able to enjoy tomorrow's trip to Fuzzy World with a squeaky clean conscience. I'm proud of you. You admitted your mistake and rectified the situation. Very adult. <laughs> Hear that? That is one squeaky clean conscience. <sighs> I have to go to class. The F in the Fuzzy World sign has three right angles alone. That eraser is as good as mine. There's one more thing I gotta do. It's a world of fuzzy, a world of fur, fun for every boy and girl. So, Dieter. 
You know, that cute Gwen Mesro still doesn't have a buddy for Fuzzy World. Since I came to America, I have been planning, plotting, and praying for this trip to Fuzzy World. Nothing's gonna ruin it, especially Gwen Mesro and her lice. I'm oh. telling you, she doesn't have lice. Didn't you read the rumor retraction in Hazelnuts and Bolts? Oh, newspapers are nothing but two-bit conspiracy mills. Okay, I'm gonna prove to you once and for all that Gwen Mesro is lice-free. Don't move. <laughs> I said don't move. Narsuma! I was just looking for, uh, popsicle sticks. Bye. Peppa Ann! I've been looking all over for you. Sit down, honey. Your live screening results just came back. I'm afraid you're infected, girl. I'm... what? Not to worry. Oh, honey. Lice are quite easy to get rid of. A terror washing with medicated shampoo usually does the trick. I just hope you haven't been sharing any brushes or hats. <gasps> Oops. Dreams of a fuzzy world frolic are shattered as an epidemic lice infestation sends students home in droves. Health officials blame the outbreak on unusually warm weather patterns and this scrunchie. At a time like this, Hal, one can only wonder what the infected students must be going through. And next, when it comes to crime fighting, this pint-sized policeman is no dummy. Stay tuned! Who will make a pretty watercolored poem for me? Lice Marie. That's right, Lice. You can have my scrunchie. Ozzy Stupid El Nino. 